the human body. Um, here are where the kidneys are situated. The left slightly higher than the right. Here we've got the heart and the chest. And here is the brain. Now the renin angiotensin system begins with the brain sensing a drop in blood pressure. Then what it does is it sends signals through the sympathetic nervous system to beta-1 adrenergic receptors in the kidneys to secrete, which then secretes renin. So now what we will do is take a coronal plane view of the kidneys and look more closely at how the secretion is carried out. Just briefly going over the anatomy of the kidneys, you know, the outer part of the kidneys are, is called the cortex and the inner is known as the medulla. The triangular looking things in the medulla are called pyramids, hence the shape. Now each pyramid consists of hundreds of thousands of nephrons, the functional unit of kidneys. This is where renin comes from. I will zoom into one of these pyramids and draw one nephron for simplicity. So now here again we have the medulla of the pyramid and the outer cortex of the pyramid. Now the head of the nephron, also known as the Bowman's capsule, sits in the cortex, goes down to the medulla before looping back up to the cortex and then back down again. We'll review the anatomy of the nephron just briefly. Um, after the Bowman's capsule, we have the proximal convoluted tubules, uh, followed by the loop of hernia. And then we have the distal convoluted tubules. And then the urine then goes out the collecting duct. Now, Bowman's capsule is where the nephron receives and begins regulating water and soluble substances before being excreted as urine. And uh, it's also where the arterioles or, or blood vessels come in and out. Now, however, nephrons don't typically look like this. They are much more complex. And usually Bowman's capsule and the arterioles are facing opposite the distal convoluted tubules. Um, something like this. Now this speci specialized structure enables the distal convoluted tubules to monitor changes and then they can send signals to the front of the nephron, the head of the nephron, if anything bad happens. So such as if the distal convoluted tubules senses low sodium or high sodium, it will tell the 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 beginning of the nephron to you know stop stop what you're doing or you know change what you're doing. Um, so yeah, just quickly going with the anatomy again. We have the proximal convoluted tubules, and then we have opposite it. We have the distal convoluted tubules, and then the urine goes up the collecting ducts. Uh, and this loop here is called the loop of Henry. Um An important vocabulary to learn is the it's called the glomerular apparatus. And what this is, it's, it's where the arterioles, the Bowman's capsule, and the returning distal convoluted tubules are situated. So we will, we will zoom into the glomerular apparatus to begin to understand how renin is secreted. So here we have the Bowman's capsule going towards the proximal tubule. And coming in and out are the arterioles. The one coming in is called the afferent arteriole, and the one coming out is the effort. Um, now, this section here is called the glomerular apparatus, again. Um, now, around the afferent arterioles and part of the efferent arteriole, the one coming out, are these specialized cells, these ones called red, or just depicted as red, and these are called the just glomerular cells. These cells is what secretes renin. So, for example, when a brain detects low blood pressure, it sends signals to these just glomerular cells to secrete renin. And renin, uh, I'll depict as R with a circle. Uh, now, as mentioned, the glomerular apparatus consists also of the returning distal convoy tubules. If you remember, we'll go back to the picture. As you can see here, the distal convoy tubules near the arterioles. So the distal convoy tubules, they are made of many cells, also, also made up of these cells called macula densa. And these are special cells that can uh, detect and sets changes in this tubule. For example, if it, it can detect low blood pressure which with low sodium or low chlorine molecules and if it senses these low amounts it sends signals the macula densa cells send signals to the just glomerular cells to secrete renin 
So the kidneys itself um, detects the blood pressure, not only the brain. So it should be noted that, just, that the gestor glomerular cells also secrete um, pro-renin, a precursor to renin. And um, pro-renin uh, pro is also detected in the body um, and it's related to high blood pressure, but it's not well credited or as credited as um, renin. Um, so renin is an enzyme um, consisting of about 406 amino acids. It looks very uh, similar like a kidney. You can check out the picture on Google. Uh, Pro-renin, on the other hand, consists of an extra 43 amino acid chain, which blocks the activation site or the cleft. So the color drawn in red here, this squiggly line, this is pro-renin. Um, now, there are these specialized cells in the Bowman's capsule called podocytes. Also, these other ones called the mesangeal cells. Uh, these cells help convert pro-renin into renin. Um, how does it do this? Well, let's take a detour and zoom into this section where the arterioles and the head of the nephrons meet. So, on the right, we've got the arterioles coming in and the line on the left is the head, is the, just the beginning of the Bowman's capsule. So in between the arterioles and the head of the bone's capsule, we have these cells, the, as mentioned, these podocytes and the other one, the mesangeal cells. So these cells, they're special because they have these receptors um, called um, PRR. These PRR, these stand for the easily pro-renin receptors, and what these do is basically convert pro-renin into renin. Here we will draw a uh, pro-renin with the extra 43 amino acid chain with this red, depicted in red. What it does is it will bind to it will bind to the pro-renin receptor. And when the pro-renin binds to the pro-renin receptor, it the it cleaves off the extra 43 amino acid chain as shown. Leaving just renin and then renin just goes out to the body so this is important to know and what we'll learn next is how renin binds to angiotensinogen and converts it into this angiotensin 2 the final product or angiotensin 1 and then angiotensin 2 thank you